So I've been using the uh, Sony a7 IV now for about three, four, maybe five months um, for landscape photography and a few other things as well. So I'm here in the Ogwen Valley in Snowdonia and we're going to talk a little bit about the pros and cons and whether this is definitely worth it considering there are so many different options and some really affordable alternatives as well. It's actually in these situations when uh, something about the a7 IV that I really like but I take for granted because I've been using you know this 7 series this form factor for so long is the size and weight when you put it in one of these peak design catcher clips it just doesn't budge because it's so small even with a giant 70 to 200 on it at times it's great to have such a small little camera when you're out hiking like this let's have a little bit of a break you see, I wasn't always intending to get the a7 IV. If it's not clear, the video that's uh, being recorded now is being shot on the a7S III. Uh, this is just about photos and landscape photography really today. I will talk a bit about the video capabilities of the a7 IV uh, in comparison to the S3. But I wasn't always intending to get the a7 IV, you see. I was always planning on getting the a7 III because it's just such good value for money at the moment. And that's one of my kind of sticking points here is that the a7 IV is amazing but so is the a7 III. So if I was looking to buy a camera, let's say it was, I was buying my first camera or I wanted to buy my first full frame camera, I'm not sure I'd buy the a7 IV. Another really uh, great feature of the, a7, uh, the a7 IV is that flippy out screen. I know it's kind of, people think it's for vlogging, but it's also really handy for this situation where I'm trying to shoot and get this grass just perfectly at the bottom of the frame. And um, because I've got that articulating screen, I can actually see it, you see, I can see it on the screen and I'm shooting like that. I know that's something that other camera companies have done for ages, but for the Sonys, this is new stuff, you see. get the uh, viewers at home too excited but I think we're beating the sun I think we're going up faster than the sun is going down so that's good now there is actually one thing that properly winds me up on the a7 IV and it's unique to that camera I'll show you what I mean hold on see this little uh, selector now the trouble is this goes from camera to video in the middle, then to S and Q mode. Now I don't really use S and Q mode on this camera very much at all. So it means you have to be really careful to switch it to there. But if, if you, you know, if you wanted to just go snap, snap, they should have put camera, video, and then S and Q in the middle since it's used less. Sounds really, really sort of uh, niggly, but honestly, that really bothers me. So we just talk video on the A7 IV for a second, okay? I do miss the 4K 120, it's obviously possible here on the a7s3 uh, but sometimes when i accidentally pick this up because they look very very similar i get i realize it hasn't got 4k 120 and i use that a lot for my interiors if i go super wide and go 4k 120 it just kind of gets a super smooth movement from the uh, you know from the interiors and stuff like that so i use that a lot and it is a little frustrating that this doesn't have it however another thing to mention that my a7 IV actually overheated uh, while doing video and this is it was in a reasonably warm environment but not unreasonably warm. So I do understand that there's probably limitations to the body of the a7 IV, uh, which is why it probably doesn't do the 4K 120. Either that or they just, you know, they didn't want to, you know, devalue the a7S III, because if it did do that, the a7S III probably wouldn't be quite uh, worth it quite as much, you see. So, you know, I do understand that, uh, but it's a little bit frustrating because it would be great to be able to do exactly the same thing on both of these cameras, the a7S III and the a7 IV. So something to keep in mind. Somewhere from around here would be the shot that I was kind of looking for if it wasn't for that giant big bunch of cloud just over there. So I can see the sun through the clouds. We would have made it, I think, but the big cloud came and spoiled all my fun. Mm -hmm. 
If you're looking to buy your first full frame camera, I would say look at the a7 III if you're looking to buy into Sony. But after four or five months shooting with the a7 IV, what is my final verdict? I would say it's the near perfect camera for me. So I'm very, very happy with my purchase. I'll throw that shot up on the screen now that I took over on the ridge there. If nothing else, I got a composition which I think I'll play with when the light is a little better, but it's a shame about those clouds. Thanks very much for joining me on this trip. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of them, and I'll see you in the next one.